It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground at San Jose Convention Center at the very first ever Open Power Summit. It's a brand new uh, show with a relatively new organization, the Open Power uh, Foundation, and we're joined with one of the founders, founding members uh, from Google, Gordon McKean, Senior Director from Google, but more importantly, the Chairman of Open Power. So congratulations on this big event. Thank you very much, Jeff. I have Really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, absolutely. So let's jump into it. What is Open Power and why is the Open Power Summit important? Well, um, Open Power Foundation is a, a, an organization. We started it about a year and a year and a half ago, officially, um, back in December of 2013. We uh, started with only five members, and we've actually grown the organization into about 113 members now. Um, we've got. Um, a, n a number of uh, members from across the ecosystem that make up the hyperscale computing industry. So we've got uh, everyone from chip providers with IBM and uh, Suzhou Power, uh, Power Core, all the way out to the end customers like Rackspace, Google, and, and end consumers. Okay. So um, it's really covering the whole space, and what we set out to do was actually attack what we saw, which was a, a growing trend that we were seeing a decrease in the the uh, performance uh, value of servers um, over time. We just weren't seeing the effects of, of Moore's law um, really having that impact on the the price performance of a of a server. And so we thought by bringing this community together, we could actually try and combat that trend by actually optimizing the system bottlenecks out. So let's back up a bit and talk about the power and open power is the power IBM uh, microprocessor architecture, Absolutely. correct? So it actually did start with that. Okay. IBM, we needed, a, we needed to build this right. around a processor. Clouds are built on <laughs> That's something, right. right? And so we actually built this around the, the power architecture. Okay. IBM was good enough to, they, they had the, um, the foresight to actually open up their roadmap, open up the interfaces, and start to actually put uh, features into the interfaces that allowed the partner companies to actually build in tighter integration so we can eliminate those system bottlenecks. So I was going to say, do you, do you see Open Power Foundation as more of kind of a classic kind of open source project? Probably not because it didn't start organically or more kind of like a, a consortium like you see GE trying to put together right now around the Internet of Things? I'd, I'd right? say Industrial it's... Internet, excuse me. I'd say it is a, more of a traditional open um, uh, organization, um, but it does have a, a business focus. We have a, we have everyone in our group is interested in uh, furthering their business. I think everyone in all open organizations sure. are sure. doing that. Um, we've got a business we want to move forward, but I think the um, I think it's open in the sense that um, the standards are all open. Um, the uh, work products that people are building out of this are all being shared with the other member companies, and there are no uh, there are no restrictions to the member companies having access to this. Yeah, so it's interesting, right? Because power has been around for a very long time, the power uh, power line of microprocessors. Right. So wh why do you think? And I know you can't speak for Intel, but just from your point of view, being in, on the the group, why would they start to open up parts of that? Have they opened up a lot of it, a little of it? Is it really interfaces? What's the open part of of open power? Well. From uh, right now, they've actually allowed people to start designing with the chips. So they've the specs for designing a system around a Power 8 processor is the first thing that they opened up. So we had a reference board from Tyann. They were able to build that. I think it's the first third-party reference uh, system board that's come out um, with an IBM chip in a while. And we've got uh, now we've got. With this show, you can actually see a large number of system boards and systems that have been that have been showcased right. at this show. Yeah, and you said that's new. That, that was not possible not before. Something you were doing before, yeah. and we've also got them opening up the interfaces. So they've developed something called CAPI, which is a high uh, high performance interconnect for peripherals that actually allows the um, I/O devices, your networking card. Mellanox has their uh, new networking card that actually can take advantage of this high-speed interconnect and this high-performance interconnect that allows the I/O card to actually participate in highly integrated with the processor and with the processor's memory system. Right. 
that, that pesky moving of data to the core it's and back and forth, right? It's trying to get it in and out. <laughs> it never goes away. That's so right. talk a little bit about open source, right? Open source has been around a long time in software, okay. and we're seeing more and more kind of trends in hardware. We were just at the Open Compute Project uh, last week, we'll be at OpenStack Summit, we'll be at Open Networking Summit, and, and it's interesting how people are trying to apply or are applying kind of open source principles of innovation and, and getting the word out now to hardware. So how is that really working? In all cases it works. What you're doing is you're bringing together a large community of people who want to see something move forward. And with open compute and with that initiative, what you see is um, more uh, parallel activities that can go forward when you've got a large membership like that. We're seeing the same thing with open power. This broad cross section, very diverse uh, partners with very specific expertise, you can actually make a lot better progress and make a, lo a lot more uh, progress when you've got this kind of membership. And so that's what the open community fosters. Yeah, it's amazing how, how the innovation that's driven from outside of your four walls in an open situation is yep. really is really fantastic. So we're getting the hook. Last question, you're from Google. Why is this important to Google? Google's uh, involved in a lot of open initiatives. Um, anytime we see something that can advance the industry, we want to be engaged with that. And that's a big part of what Open Power is about. Great, well again, congratulations. I know we talked off camera, you've been at it for a while, the foundation's been active for a while. Having but this a lot is, of fun. This is still though the first uh, summit, right? Yes, so, it uh, is. We'll, we'll, we'll get that on the t-shirt and the bag and yep. all the other fun stuff that comes with, with the show. Thank you for coming in. All right, Gary, thanks a lot. So okay. I'm Jeff Frick, we're at the Open Power Summit, the very first one in San Jose, California, and you're watching theCUBE.